Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University doing another comparison. It's not so much a comparison, it's like two sister planes. Here they are. So if we pan away, they'll slowly come into view. It's uh, their beaches. Is it two Sierras? Is it two Sundowners? Is it three Musketeers? <laughs> no, it's a Sierra and a Sundowner. So the way to look at these, they made 4,427 Musketeers. The Musketeer is the series, like Cherokee is the series, and within it there's 181, 40, 160 Archer Warrior. Musketeer is the series, and in it there's the Musketeer, and then after that the Sundowner, and after that the Sierra. So the Sundowner is basically Beaches Cherokee 180. So basic numbers. That's a sundowner. And I mean, actually come around and see it side on. That's a sundowner. So those are fixed gear, fixed pitch, 180 horse, Lycoming four cylinder. So that's basically the spec of an archer, but it's bigger. And there's other things about it too. And then over here, we'll go around, we'll, we'll just have a quick look at the Sierra. The Sierra. The Sierra is basically the arrow. So if the Sundown is the Archer, this is the arrow, Piper Arrow. So these are retractable gear, 200 horsepower, four cylinder, I360, constant speed prop. So direct competition. They are slightly slower than their comparables. It's slightly bigger, heavier plane, slightly higher gross weight, slightly higher useful load, and a bit slower. So there's a sort of match in it where you think, okay, the 172s, which are also a primary trainer like a Sundowner is, the 172 has 39 gallons of gas. These all have 60 gallons of gas. So it's slower, but on a long cross country, these would get there first because they didn't have to land for fuel. So there's a balance. And also, there's a lot of other little beachiness things about them, which we'll now do individually. Uh, the model numbers, obviously this is a Sundowner, as we just said, and this is a Sierra. This is a Model 23, a C23, and this is a A, B, or C24. And the little one, the 160 horse Musketeer that, pre that ran, went before both, which was slightly underpowered, was a C19. Now that's like, I've just found all that out and learned all that, so correct me if I'm wrong, but 23, 24, R, and the R is retractable. The main thing about these planes, the early ones exceptional, the, the, the first versions of the Musketeer series with one door, they all have two front doors. I mean, why doesn't a lot of planes have two front doors? My Mooney doesn't, it has one door. Cherokees all have one door. The Rockwell Commanders have two doors. All the big Cherokees, they only have one door. But the amusing thing is, when I bought my first Sundowner, someone had left it in the airport with the keys hidden and the logs in the back, and I went to the airport and I just, got the logs, got the keys, and I opened the right door, slid across, sat there, suddenly realized, oh my God, there's a left door. And then wanted to know if anybody had seen me do it. But it's actually very handy having two front doors, especially in a training environment or with your wife who doesn't want to climb over or whoever's the pilot, you know. So two front doors, and here's the Sierra, same exact thing, two front doors, it's great. And they have very wide gear on them. Let's go over some of the closer, more detailed specifics. Not very comfortable, but I came under here, I wanted to show you something on these. This plane's gear, the width between the mains is 12 feet, which is like two and a half feet more than Pipers, Cessnas. So you can imagine in a crosswind, wing down, it's gonna be very forgiving to land because you're never gonna drag a wingtip because the wheel's so far out in the wing. So uh, that's a very good thing for a trainer. Plus inside the gear fairing, that top bit above the trailing link, it's a knee action um, gear leg. Inside that is a stack of rubber discs like in a Mooney that compresses. So no hydraulics, no nitrogen, no struts, no oleos to maintain, just very, very strong bulletproof gear on it. And now we'll go and lie under the Sierra and show you the difference with the uh, retractable, and one other thing which I find a little bit amusing. Okay, so the Sierra, I'm not just under here because it's showing you the gear, it's also shady. 
The gear on the Sierra is obviously retractable. Here's the mechanism that pulls it up. You can see the knee action of it and how beefy the whole thing is. It's massive. The rubber discs are all in here and the wheel swings out. You can see it's wheel well. There is a kit you can put on these where you can fear that in a bit because when it's up, the gear door ends here and the wheel is in view under the wing. So obviously that's a bit of drag. So that would speed it up if you put that fairing on. But the wheels swing out to go up. So have a look at the nose wheel though. So here we are under the nose of the Sierra. Slightly different to normal conventional uh, nose gear attraction. It doesn't just slide straight up and go into the belly like this. It turns sideways and goes up flat. So when in, if it flies over with its wheels up, you'd see the sideways nose wheel flat against the belly of the plane, which means that there's no slot in the cabin up there and there's no compromised leg room or anything. So it makes the cabin big. So it's very similar to the main wheels where you'll see all of them lying flat against the belly. The design is the same um, discs, uh, stack of rubber discs, knee action, very strong, reliable, bulletproof, um, retractable. And unlike a 182RG where you have to lift it two and a half feet off the ground to retract its gear during an annual for a gear swing, these obviously, you know, the wheels go sideways and they go out up into the dihedral of the wing. You've got to lift them off the ground an inch. That's the jacking point. So a jack here, both sides, one on the tail, lift it an inch, swing the gear. So looking around inside it, normal two front doors for this Musketeer series, big baggage door. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 270 pound uh, baggage area. It's big, flat floored, useful, hat shelf. I mean, it's a big cabin. And then up on the wing, let's get inside it and measure the cockpit. They have a weird, in fact, look, before I get up there, the fuselage curves out at the shoulder and curves back in at the bottom. You can see it on the door. So the door opens latch here, latch here. See this curve? Like it curves back out. So the door bulges out with the side of the plane. It's narrow at the bottom. So we'll measure it and see how it fares against the competition. This is the normal door to get in. It's weird to have one over here on the other side. So get the handy tape measure out. So across the cabin width, human to human, shoulder to shoulder, 41 inches there. And across here, 43 inches. So pretty big. And when you're in it, it's a very beach craft. You know what I mean? It's like, it's comfortable, excellent visibility, a lot of room between the seats. Trim is here, very like a paper. Flaps are manual. Click, click. One for takeoff, one for landing. Nice um, layout on the panel. This one's got electric trim, some slightly older King radios, um, 200 horsepower. Here's the gear, which won't be in the Sundowner. Gear up, one red, gear down, three greens. And then the uh, battery, the alternator, the boost pump, the key, and everything else is Incredibly familiar. Closing the doors doesn't need a lot of slamming. You just, very like any, like a Bonanza, you just break this little elbow, close it, and there's a top latch, which I'll show you. You shut it like this, and you twist this latch. Open it like that. Lock it. So since we're talking about measurements, the wingspan is 33 feet, approximately. And spinner to tail is about uh, 22 and a half feet long. So very similar in size to the competition as well. But they stand bigger, they're thicker, they're rounder, they're longer. It's a bigger cabin. If you had a Cherokee sitting here next to it, it would look bigger than that. So the sacrifice of bigger is a bit slower. And the reason that the Sierra, did, the Sundowner, didn't catch on as a super trainer, like a warrior or an archer, is because they were a bit slower. But if you're learning to fly, you don't need speed. You need to get there and build time. So they're actually great trainers. And if you wanted high performance, complex, retractable, 200 horse injected, the Sierra is its brother. So here we are on the Sundowner. It's almost identical, but look, an obvious lack of gear lights and a gear actuator switch and no third control for the prop. So you just got your regular throttle and mixture. You got a master switch, alternator, you got a primer and a boost pump and the ignition over there and a nice IFR lane out panel. But 
identical. I mean, they're made the same, except one is, it's just like an archer would be to, uh, like an arrow would be, to, an archer would be to an arrow. Okay, so we're going to start it. We're going to just taxi up here to the end of the runway and do the usual run up and take it for a quick run. See how a sundowner flies. It sits taller than Cherokee, so the vision, the view, is a little bit higher off the ground than a Cherokee. But it's very good visibility, I mean, very good. This is a King KMD 250. Similar to a Garmin 400. Color map, no com. I got the door open because today it's hot. I mean, we're on over here, May 18th, and it's like 85 degrees. Look at that, the aileron's self-center. That's nice self-centering of them. Pulling free. It needs a vacuum pump, so this isn't going to be up. It's due for that. That's got to be something I've got to put in. So, run up. Fixed gear, fixed pitch, Cherokee. Just do it like a Cherokee, like a 172. 1700 RPM. Hot day, so let's lean in a bit. That's really lean. I picked up 150 RPM so far. So I'm going to go till it falters, and then I'm going to put it halfway back in. Still leaning. Okay, so right there. So halfway back in. Mag check. Left. Right, left, both. No prop. Carp heat. Slight drop. Claps. Ten. Placerville, Sundowner, uh, 24615, departing runway 23, a local flight, Placerville. Very square wings. Smoothly to full power. <laughs> wow. Elevator. This is elevated, flat off the runway, straight up at 60. Okay, flapped away. Now, if this was the sun, the Sierra, I would be putting up gear and things now, but this is the Sundowner, so it's fixed gear, fixed pitch, no prop to adjust, no gear to put up. Get the RPM back to 2400. A little bit of forward trim. Placerville, Sundowner, uh, 615, left crosswind, 23, Placerville. Very stable, solid, beach, very beach. Everything fits, feels firm. I read in an AOPA Pilot Magazine article about Sundowners that they, um, do what they're told. They're just precise, well-built planes. Very, there's not a lot of them. You don't see much of them around because there's only 4,400 built, but love the whole series of Musketeers. So there's, there's only like 400 Sierras. I'm not sure how many Sundowners there are, but they're very popular, especially 180 horse with a, with a fixed pitch prop like this one. See the GPS doing its thing? Placerville, Sundowners are 615 on left downwind, 23 at Placerville. I got an air vent blowing on this mic. Uh, there we are. Great, I mean, if I wanted a trainer I could learn in and then keep, but I'd have four seats and two doors and use after I'd learned in it without feeling limited. One of these would be actually very good. 
Placerville. Sundown at 615, left base, 23, Placerville. So I've been dealing with Sierra Sundown, Sierra Sundown, i got to remember, I'm in the Sundown, so its wheels are already down. Do not get confused if you're flying multiple aircraft and you forget which one you're in, especially if they're this similar. That's how gear up and end up happening. Placerville, Sundown 615 is on uh, turning final. Full stop on 23 at Placerville. The videos make the approaches all look flat. This probably looks perfect, but it's high. But I'm doing um, 75. The runway is staying exactly where I put it, so it means we're aiming for the numbers. Bam, 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 three wheels, perfect. Flaps! That was extremely gentle. Very nice to fly, very nice, nice to fly. So even though I was that high on final, this is the high speed exit, which is the third of the way down the runway. But I've hardly had to brake. I mean, talk about a nice sort of docile plane to learn to fly in. So that was a quick look at the um, Beach Musketeer series, the Sundowner and the Sierra in particular. And uh, this is Skywagon University. We kind of get planes and look at different models and types with a bit more detail perhaps than some other places. And then we fly one of them like we did. So uh, if you liked it, subscribe here, subscribe right there and then ding on the bell for the notifications. When I put another video up, you'll get a notification. And thanks for watching.